Yo, yo guys, welcome to our Board Punks podcast episode 29 and yun grabe. Kamusta ka naman, Boss Fatal? Syempre. Yun, syempre. Lagi tayo nito drive to educate pa rin sa space, di ba? Kasi yes. syempre sa sobrang daming natutunan ko in the episodes of Board Punks of Society like na na ano yun, tarang na na-educate eh, akong gawin siya lalo. Like, is example kay, kay Coach Migs yung about cash flow. Grabe. Yes. Ang, ang laki talaga yung natutunan ko dito sa ilang mga episodes way back before hanggang ngayon. Like, we further strive to educate and implement yung ating natutunan in, in, in life talaga. Yes, and syempre kahit anong mangyari, tuloy-tuloy lang tayo dito. Kasi ang goal naman ng Board Punks of Society is to educate invest and thrive together no matter what happens. And yes, yeah, siguro punta muna tayo bago natin pakilala ang ating special guest right now. Mm-hmm. Gusto ko muna i-remind kayo guys na hindi tayo available sa Facebook right now kasi meron tayong technical problem. So yes, for now, we are live sa ating YouTube channel. And yes, we are live sa ating YouTube channel. And Ma- ano siya, ipipresent namin siya sa Facebook after netong podcast natin. So, yes. So, before we introduce, gusto ko muna pakita sa inyo ang ating malupitang jacket. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, joke lang, pero... Oh. Yes. Uh, <laughs> pero, yes, uh, guys. Before we introduce our malupitang speaker, so, syempre, punta muna tayo sa ating crypto news and updates. So, ano nga ba crypto news and updates ngayon? So Most first of all, no? Lapansin mo ba yung biglang dump ng BTC? Nako po. Oo nga, no? The, from, ano yun, yung, from... yung, yung, yung mga TA na ano, yung mga TA na long, ang, ang ganda ng projection, like 38, 39K, biglang, bang, it dropped up to 36K. Like, in a matter yeah, of one night? One Alam ko, what night siya? Like, tulog ang mga tao, i-stop loss mo, ginhawa ka. Tapos, <laughs> ah. Oo oh nga, isa ka balita o oh guys, uh, based on an article that we've read, is over $370 million in total liquidation happened as Bitcoin crashed to 30, $36,000, tama ba? 37,000, eh. Oh. 37,000, grabe. 370 million dollars. So, that's like 15 billion pesos. 18 billion pesos. Grabe. Pero, syempre, uh, hopefully, guys, stop loss kayo doon kung, kung if ever na nag-ano kayo, na, trade kayo sa Bitcoin or even even altcoins kasi... Diba, sumusun- based sa akin natutunan is sumusunod lang ang mga altcoins sa galaw ng Bitcoin. Diba? Exactly. So, yes, uh, take care guys and tuloy-tuloy lang ang laban if ever natalo kayo or nanalo kayo. Eh, take it as an experience, as an expensive lesson if ever. And ganun talaga ang buhay. Expensive <laughs> talaga. <laughs> expensive lesson talaga. And... Ganun talaga, tuloy-tuloy lang, and yes. Anong next pala? Anong next? Before... Siyempre, nabanggit mo expensive lesson, siyempre. May, may panibago mm. expensive lesson na naman in terms of the metaverse in sa project ng Yuga Lab. <laughs> oh! Ano yan? Ano yan? Ano yan? Ito yung, ito yung mga pro, ito yung project na laging inaabangan ng mga blue chip, eh. Yung mm. the other side. Ayan. The other side. So, ano, ano pa tong ano, uh, the other side sa mga hindi pa familiar? Kasi ako medyo familiar ako, familiar ako sa the other side pero may mga taong di pa familiar. Pero, syempre, before mo explain yan, Boss Petal, ano, ano ba yung Yuga Labs muna? Explain ko muna, no? Explain muna natin sure. kung ano yung Yuga Labs. So, itong Yuga Labs, guys, ito yung team behind sa Board Ape Yacht Club. So, one of the most famous, one of the most iconic NFT brand sa buong mundo. Na, ano, y- ano yung floor price nila ng Board Ape Yacht Club? If, ano ba It's around 100 plus pa rin Ethereum, malam ko, if I'm not mistaken. God damn! 100 plus Ethereum is like, ano ba to? Um, ano to? 16 million pesos? Pwede lang yung bulsa, eh, no? 
grabe. 16 million pesos, guys. And ayun, grabe. Kung kung kayo meron 16 million, sige, sabihin ko kung ikaw ang boss fatal. Meron kang 20 million pesos. Bibili ka, yung 16 million mo pesos mo ba ipambibili mo ng board AP club or hindi? Pakisagot din niya sa general chat para malaman natin. <laughs> <laughs> kung, kung, kung yung budget na yun, mm-hmm. eh, sa totoo lang, marireinvest ko pa yung matitira dun eh. <laughs> Saka, to be honest, maganda ang vision ng, ano, ah, ng board AP club kasi ayan na nga yung the other side na kasama ng iba't ibang blue chip projects na partnered ng board ape din, di ba? So technically, it has great vision pa rin. And yung airdrop na ape coin, it still does something pa rin. Di ba? Mm-hmm. Yes, grabe. So, and sobrang dami nilang airdrop actually and sobrang solid. Pero, ayun, grabe solid ng napagdaanan na rin ng board ape yaw club and ano ba tong ano? Uh, actually, binili nila yung ano no? Yung crypto punks and me bits, mm-hmm. tama ba? Bin- yes, yeah, uh, sila na nga. Sila na ang bagong owner ng crypto punks and me bits. And right now, they have a new metaverse project, which is the other side. So, ano ba tong uh, the other side, basically, for tight ano lang, simple explanation? Parang to be honest, ang um other side it focus on multiplayer eh, parang it depicts the new metaverse mm-hmm. in terms of gaming pa rin in general eh, to be honest mm-hmm. yeah, like eh. iba't ibang ano virtual worlds joined into one kaya yung collaboration sila with cool cats worlds of women crypto toads talagang makikita mm-hmm. mo na a huge project just to be built in a one metaverse which is the yeah. other side Oh, ano parang sama-sama yung iba't ibang proyekto. Basically, tinitipon nila yung mga, oh. <laughs> Pwede. Basically, tinitipon nila, you know? tinitipon nila yung ano, mga NFT projects into one metaverse. Mm-hmm. And that's the other side for you. And we are very excited sa mangyayari dito. Kasi, ayun nga, you know? 55,000 lands was sold for 305 ape o kaya 6,000 And balita ko yung yung gas dito umabot ng 2 ETH. Imagine guys, gas pa lang ha? gas pa lang umabot ng 2 ETH. <laughs> yeah, yung si sabi natin expensive lesson pa rin. <laughs> expensive lesson kasi 2 ETH kapantay na ng ano, kapantay na ng mismong ng binebenta nila, <laughs> di ba? So, ayun guys. <sighs> Ganun talaga, pero syempre, gusto nilang mag- mapasok sa ecosystem ng Board Ape, ng Yuga Labs. That's why. So, pero sy- syempre, ano, sabi rin na uh, mismo sa Yuga Labs that all of the field transactions din, ma- oh. pa- ibabalik din. Kaya oh, kahit pa paano pa rin, very generous si Yuga Labs in terms of the project itself pa rin. Na, Makikita mo kasi very congested <laughs> yung yung, mm-hmm. pra, yung ano yung pag nangyayari kasi lahat sila gustong maka-join. Mm-hmm. It lang sila lang in kasi mm-hmm. it's a big project talaga that it will cater many people. Yes, actually. Eh talagang ano no, talagang breaking barriers tong ginagawa ng Google Labs. And yun anyway, next next last lastly guys. So Yeah, actually, may nabasa rin ako dito na sinend sa atin ng ating director. The tax department ay tinatarget <laughs> ang Indians earning interest on their crypto. So, may ano to, b- bibigyan nila ng tax yung crypto. <laughs> And it's actually 30%. Yung earnings mo sa crypto, lalagyan ng tax. And it's actually 30%. And gusto pa nila tong palakihin ng Indian government. Grabe. Ano masasabi mo doon, Boss Fatal? <laughs> Kasi ang, ang pagkakabayta ko dati dito, kahit mapatalo, mamanalo ka, babu- may, may 30% pa rin eh. <laughs> Oo oh, nga eh. Grabe. And so any trades na gagawin mo, babawasan pa rin nila. Hmm. For what I know, ha? correct me if I'm wrong. Kasi it, it has been a news back then talaga. Hmm. Tapos ito, uh, talagang push through nila yung mm. sa tax in terms of the tradings na ginagawa in, 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 grabe mahirap kaya 
Kaya ako sa inyo guys, huwag niya na ilalabas yung crypto nyo. <laughs> Tahimik na lang ba? <laughs> Tahimik, anonymous. <laughs> Tahimik, joke lang, joke lang. Pero, yes, uh, syempre, ito, ito namang talks ay gagamitin naman sa improvement improvement ng country. Sana, gamitin sa improvement ng country. So, yan, magbayad pa rin tayo. Pero, True. yan, ganun talaga. Paano pag, ano, pag nilagyan na ng tax ng Pilip, yung Pilipinas nilagyan na ng tax Ako, mahirap, mahirap hanapin. <laughs> ilalabas mo pa ba? <laughs> Ang tanong, ilalabas mo pa ba? Sa podcast, crypto. podcast na lang tayo. Wala nang trading. <laughs> Pero, yeah guys, eh, sobra solid ng mga news natin dito. And if meron pa kayong alam na news or updates regarding sa crypto, matulad ng binili ni Elon Musk yung Twitter, pwede niyong sabihin, pwede niyong i-chat sa general chat o kaya dyan sa YouTube channel, guys. Kasi we want to discuss about it. Kahit for 15, for 10 to 15 minutes lang. Basta para updated lang tayo sa mga nakaganapan sa crypto world and sa investing world. Diba? Tama, tama. So, yan. Why not, ano, uh, let's introduce our speaker for tonight. And ano nga bang pag-uusapan natin talaga ngayong podcast natin, Boss Fatal? Exactly. Kasi ta- very curious din ako about portfolios eh, di ba? Mm, yeah. Actually, so, no? how? How talaga? <laughs> Oo, oh, saka ano bang ano? Like, kasi si, ang balita ko, yung speaker natin for tonight is portfolio manager siya and napakalupit na financial advisor. Grabe. Portfolio manager pa, no? So, and ano nga, pero ano, itong tanong ko, ano bang ginagawa ng isang portfolio manager? Diba? Yun din eh, curious din ako eh, to be honest. Kaya excited din akong matuto dito sa ating guest host, ay guest speaker natin sa ating mm-hmm. episode 29. Kaya, yes, episode 29. And curious din ako kung ano bang ginagawa ng portfolio manager. Kung tama ba yung nasa utak ko na sila yung nag-handle ng, ano, ng kunyari may investor? Sila ba yung mag-handle ng portfolio ng investor na yun? Kung tama ba yun? So, siguro mamaya malalaman natin. Pero, okay, so ikaw, ano ba sa tingin mo? Yes. Parang in terms of diversifying assets, parang syempre, Ooh. portfolio ng bawat isa, di ba? Like, Ooh. would this be would, would this be a good investment, um let's say 30% of my portfolio dito? Mm-hmm. Parang ganun ba? Yun lang yung sa naisip ko on how they will manage yung oh. mismo portfolio ng isang tao. Magandang ano yun, magandang insight yun. Pero syempre, alamin na natin ngayon kasi sin- ang speaker natin for today ay grad- actually graduate siya ng Masters of Science in Management and Bachelor of Science in Humanities sa University of Asia and the Pacific. And currently, CMO siya or Chief Marketing Officer of Open Journal. enabling its premium subscribers private access to a setup-based system na nag incorporate directional bias through the Elliott Wave principle for trading in the cryptocurrency and local markets. Grabe. <laughs> so basically, CMO ang ating speaker for today for Open Journal and an independent financial advisor for Call Financial Group. And grabe, and level 2 chartered market technician. Isa sa mga pinakamalulupit na tao when it comes to trading din. And talaga Open Journal Trading League 2020 Top 10. Investigrams Trading League Round 1 2020 Top 3. Grabe, ang dami. <laughs> ang dami. And yes, let's welcome Joseph Singson, also known as Open Journal. What's so, yes. up, boy? Welcome, Hi guys. Welcome, welcome. Good evening. Happy Saturday and shout out sa hat na nakikinig sa YouTube and to those who be watching this later sa recording. Mga nasa rally yes, siguro. Grabe. Mga nasa rally la. <laughs> dami kasi actually da, tatlo at ng presidential balls ang sabay-sabay. Na so, nga. May meeting diya ba si right now? <laughs> Pero syempre, oh tuloy-tuloy tayo dito sa pagtuturo eh. Tuloy-tuloy tayo sa matuto dito sa ating board pang society kasi that's what our goal to onboard and to educate as much people as possible. 
So, yes, so Joseph Singson, um ano uh, uh, pwede bang ano uh, kasi dami naming nasabi kanina, dami naming nasabing mga achievements mo and gusto ko pa naming makilala. Sino nga ba si Joseph Singson and bakit Open Journal? Sure. So, maybe Open Journal muna, then we can talk about me. Um Open Journal, we're really a community of traders that focus on the cryptocurrency markets. And we're really just here to help everyone reach their financial goals, whatever it may be. And in as much as we're in a challenging environment right now, in the medium to long term, we still believe that, you know, cryptocurrency and blockchain technology will present a lot of opportunity. And we're just here to help everyone maximize and capitalize on these opportunities as much as it's very challenging and difficult right now mm-hmm. and yeah we do that through a community that enables private access to our team that manages funds and we do that through coaching through zoom town hall sessions through videos on demand that just helps everyone you know become a better trader or speed up your learning curve diba right? Hmm. Grabe, ang ganda ng ginagawa ng Open Journal, ah. So, ano to? Uh, basically, Open Journal manages funds, too. And so, um, at least our team, um, of course, co-founders Javi Medina and Matt Flores, whom I work with and learn from, we are all um, licensed independent financial analysts with Call Financial. So, we do that as a full-time profession, but of course, we manage our community, Open Journal on the side. So to answer your question, technically speaking, Open Journal itself does not manage funds, but we within the COL ecosystem mm. manage um, local clients. Yep. Mm, nice. So wait lang, um, regarding sa ano pala, so how do you manage like, diba, when it comes to the topic of managing funds, how do you what is a fund manager and how do you do this kind of thing? Voila. That's a great question. And I think I want to start by saying that similar to being a trader, you know, everyone wants to be a fund manager, portfolio manager. Everyone wants to be a trader. But they also don't recognize the huge amount of work, stress, and responsibility it entails. So, siguro, break apart natin para we can know the differences between a portfolio manager, a full-time trader, a proprietary trader with a, in a brokerage house or a dealer, right? So I guess number one, a portfolio manager or a fund manager or in our ecosystem, we're independent financial advisors. We really manage a discretionary fund for our clients. By discretionary fund, this means that we as the fund manager has full autonomy over what to do, the strategy, when to buy and sell, how much to buy and sell, etc. That's as opposed to an advisory service, which the client has direction with regarding to anong gagong account, diba? Si client yung magsasabi to execute. So ours is not an advisory service, it's a discretionary service. And if you wonder why, um, I guess from experience, and this is something that my colleagues also share, is that oftentimes in advisory services, means an nagaka conflict. Alam mo yan, too many cooks in the kitchen spoil the food, diba? So, para mas klaro yung strategy, mas madali po yung execution ng kailangan gawin, the fund is structured in a discretionary sort of manner. So, that's the first one. Second is, with regarding being a full-time trader, I'm sure a lot of the BPOS fam members and even in Open Journal and in Investigrams, you know, in advent of the technology we have today and these opportunities, a lot of people are, you know, full-time traders. So I guess the difference between a fund manager and a full-time trader is that full-time traders trade their own account, right? They probably don't yes. have any clients, but if ever they do have clients, maybe it's a bit um, more private, I guess, or under the table, you know, a family private fund or something like that. Mm-hmm. Then, then I guess the third bucket is um, 
the third bucket would be um, maybe those executing orders, like a, a broker dealer, for example, or a propriet proprietary trader who is likely employed by a brokerage or an institution to either execute on behalf of the firm, meaning a prop trader like the ones you see on billions, for instance, working in Axe Capital, they manage the funds of Axe Capital, mm -hmm. right? The boss Sila yung there. Na. Yeah, yeah. Sila yung nag -to trade. Sometimes it gets a bit more complicated because within that firm, they also have and manage clients. So I guess that's the main difference across those three. And I hope that clarifies it. Mm. Mm. Nice. So, okay. So, ang fund manager is parang kayo yung, kayo yung magte-trade sa ano, funds ng investors or ng client nyo. And then, so, yes. when it comes to portfolio manager, you manage discretionary fund, fund for their client, mm -hmm. for your clients. So, different siya sa advisory service. So, basically, parang ikaw yung magde-decide kung ano yung papasukan ng fund managers, tama ba? Right. So, we're the ones who, you know, execute the order. We're the ones who decide what we're gonna buy, how much we're gonna buy, when we're gonna buy. And um, maybe some of you also are asking, what's the difference between what I'm doing versus, let's mm -hmm. say, uh, an index fund, a mutual fund, mm -hmm. a UITF, or a VOL? So, those different um, investment vehicles are also a fund but mm -hmm. alam mo yun, parang they move as a aircraft carrier so mas malaki sila as opposed to mm -hmm. us na we're a smaller fund we're like a group of more agile speed boats if that makes sense so yes within our ecosystem as well we also have different kinds of funds but we also have our group that um has a more active trading strategy getting in and out of the markets for our clients given it's you know obviously relatively smaller as opposed to a full-blown um, mutual fund of that sort mm -hmm. yeah. nice so wait lang, um i i need to clarify lang something so itong portfolio manager is talagang ano no kahit you can be you can you be a, a portfolio manager kahit Ano lang? Ina-handle ina mo lang yun. Medyo nakat si ano. Ano, tama ba? Or is it, nakat ka ano, sir? Ano, sir? Ah, nakat ba ako? Sorry. Oh, nakat ka. Sorry. Wait lang. Uh, we're, sana, sana ako to Miguel. Sorry, sorry. Uh, yung clarification, biglang nag-cut doon. Ah, okay. So, sige. Ngayon, okay na? Yeah. So, yep. okay. Sige. Um, this portfolio manager, um, can you be a portfolio manager kahit yung ina-handle mo lang ay yung funds ng uh, friends mo ng mga lumalapit sa yung tao cause ano naman uh, parang ano uh, parang kilala ka sa maliit na circle na yun na magaling kang hmm. mag-handle ng portfolios that's a great question and I think that's something that a lot of people are asking and to be very clear about it from law and from the SEC it's illegal to solicit um, funds if you're not a licensed professional with the SEC. Not only do you have to be a licensed professional, but you also have to be employed or have your license with a particular brokerage house. So, yeah, um, maybe to those who are doing it on the side or are planning to do it but aren't sure... I think it's very important to, you know, para uh, we're doing things correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it with the SEC, um, employ yourself in a brokerage house. But I'm I'm talking in so far as um equities are concerned. Of course, if we're talking mm -hmm. about, you know, crypto and NFTs, I don't think we have any clear legislation just yet. Medjo yes. um gray area papusha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Still figuring that out. Diba? Mm -hmm. So yes, and also, uh, what kinds of investment like have you been managing? So, anong mga halo-halo ba to or meron kang certain industry na tina-target or certain like crypto or kaya stocks lang, or kaya mga bonds, something like that. Right. 
Good question also. So right now, we focus on uh, just two things. Number one, direct equities, meaning individual stocks on the Philippine Stock Exchange, your SM Prime, BDO, BPI, Jollibee, um, Converge, all of that, right? Mm. The second one are mutual funds. And within mutual funds, you have other subgroups there. You have index funds, you have bond funds, you have money market funds. But at least for myself and my team members as of the now, our main focus really is on direct equity, so Philippine stocks. Mm. Um, how about crypto? Um, for cryptocurrency, it's something that we've pilot tested in the past, but at least for now, our focus for the business is, you know, repivoting to open journal and the local opportunity. You know, we're trying to not bite off more than we can chew and really slay one dragon at a time. So, yeah, um, something that we pilot ran before, but at least for now, uh, repivoting to the local market and the opportunities there, as well as building open journals more. Yes, yes. So to follow up that question, since you have experience in different kinds of investments, what's for you, what's the best and the worst you've you've experienced in terms of being a fund manager? Sure. Um, I guess I'll start mm-hmm. off with, uh, you know, worse or um, challenging experiences. <laughs> I guess this is also what other people don't see. Because, I don't know, like on social media, there's a lot of glorifying the wins, right? People por- posting port snaps, people celebrating what they've done right. And it's really a huge survivorship bias because people don't see the mistakes that are committed. I mean, rarely do people really post that they effed up this trade, they got stopped out, gumawasa ng kagaguhan or whatever, diba? Um I guess the challenging parts are when the market is down, just like the environment we're in, and we're just on the sidelines, at least for now, you know, raising cash levels. And it's tough because doing this full time, you always want to, you know, maximize the opportunity. You always want to make the next trade. But at least in the short term, in instances where we have to be more defensive, wala talaga gagawin. And we have to sit mm-hmm. on our hands, what Mark Minervini refers to as developing your sit-out power, diba? Um, Another challenging experience, I think, which is um, exclusive or related to this line of work are dealing with challenging clients or disappointed clients. I mean, real talk, you know, it's not going to be Christmas every day there are going to be mistakes made. There are going to be opportunities missed. There are going to be challenges in what we do and have to deal with that accordingly. You know, be professional. You got to manage expectation. There's a lot of, you know, communication involved. And there's a lot of empathy needed to understand different points of view and dealing with different personalities, different um backgrounds different expectations so i guess um to call a spade a spade um in instances where portfolios down or the market is bad it's a challenging position to be in because our income to an extent is contingent on you know commissions cash flow uh turn when we execute but chamber naman kung walang opportunity we're not gonna deploy or buy anything for the sake of deploying the bank well, ano pala, uh, do you handle, ano, like, sobrang, I mean, ano yung parang pinaka base level in being your client pala? Sure, so, good question. So, for full transparency, it would depend on who you ask from our team. So, you know, my colleagues will have a different answer since that's their fund. Um have your mat will have their own um decision regarding that but at least for me you know starting out building the fund the floor to be a client is two million pesos for the local market mm. Grabe, two million pesos so fatal <laughs> Pasok, ana. 
Two million? <laughs> Pag nakapagano na, nakapag-trade na ka ng matindi. <laughs> <laughs> Pero yun, ako oh, pala, how, how do you handle clients na, syempre, yung mga dissatisfied, mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. kunyari, o, kalo ka ba, ganyan kayo, bakit, bakit, alawot ngayon, parang, how do you handle right. them? Parang, sure. or, and, na ano ba kayo, parang, may, may point ba na parang, gusto na kayong ipasara or idemanda because of handling some, for enough some portfolio and with went wrong something like that mm-hmm. um siguro I'll engage the latter part of the question yung papasara or demanda uh, definitely not naman since there's a contract and of course in our line of work as licensed professionals there's really no guarantee right i mean there's no clause that will say that you're guaranteed to make money or hindi matatalo yung account mm. so that's not exclusive just to us. I mean, go to any kind of UITF, VOL, mutual fund. It's going to be the same thing, which is subject to the market. Unless it's a fixed income sort of instrument or money market instrument, wherein you have a fixed interest, APY, or yield, at least for the active management of that, you know, um, kung talo, then talo, right? How do we deal with that? Um, I think it starts off with having clear expectations first. And I learned this also a hard way, na parang disappointment kasi comes when expectation doesn't meet reality. Eh. So in order to manage expectation, it has to be clearly set from the beginning, you know. That's why I always mention that ourselves, clients, people in general, everybody should have a healthy expectation from the market and develop a healthy relationship with money. Because we can't come into this business expecting our money to double in a week or in a month. We're not here to get rich quick. We're here to build sustainable wealth over the long time using active swing strategies or whatever strategy we would choose. So mm-hmm. in instances where hindi and sapat or that wasn't able to be done, then there's just a lot of, you know, back and forth explanation, negotiation, um, empathy involved, just really being able to hear them out and explain. But all things considered, um, in instances where an account would be down or doing nothing during this time, yung sinasabi ng lahat ng mga malupit na trader, diba? trading is 80-20. And I don't mean just the 80% psychology, 20% execution. I'm talking about 80% of profits or 80% of majority of profits are made in 20% of the time. And that 20% of the time is when the market is actually trending, right? Trending up or down. Obviously, we're long here, the right? So, yun. That's why it's important to also develop your sit-out power and not force trades or force opportunities because in instances when you do, baka makakat ka lang ng maraming beses. So, mm-hmm. that's something that I also explain that um, there's a lot of time left for the year. There's a lot of opportunities that we're gonna see in the latter quarters and we have to be patient. Mm-hmm. Grabe. So, solid insight with that and it, well, talagang parang ano, no? mahirap nga ta- parang ano challenging ang pagiging portfolio manager especially sa ano po, po, possible ano eh, parang possible backlash of your clients if ever mm-hmm. something goes wrong right and ito pala uh, regarding ano assets how long do you hold, hold certain assets to make your portfolio sustainable and ano yung kino-consider mong sustainable ilang percent growth per year something like that Sure. So, um, again, I'll answer the latter part of the question first. Yung, what is sustainable? Um, at least for our team, our strategy, how we look at things, we don't set a target or we don't really have an expectation. It's more about generating positive alpha year on year, right? And what positive alpha means is returns in excess of the benchmark index so we're employed by our clients because 
they want to beat the more passive index funds. They want to beat the mutual funds that are investing in the PSEI. So that's pretty much, pretty much our benchmark year on year, you know, generating positive alpha, beating the market as majority of people refer to. So yeah, that's what I believe would be sustainable. Is it hard? Definitely, yes. Are there times or periods when that might be harder to do? For sure. Pero that's why we are here, right? That's why our role exists, to be able to add value on top of more passive instruments. Um, regarding the um, first part of the question, uh, how long do we hold the stock, right? Honestly, it depends on the stock, right? I mean, depends on the kind of trade as well. If it's a more short-term tactical capitulation trade, then holding period might be two to five days. If it's a more moderate-term swing trade, maybe a week and a half, two weeks. If the market is really good and we're fortunate to be able to buy a tertiary-term bottom, then maybe holding period would be more than a month, a few months. But of course, that really depends on the market condition. Alam mo yun, like, yes. depending what you're trading, kung bounce lang or reversal or some sort mm -hmm. of momentum you're riding, yeah. Grabe. Ganun, ganun pala yun sa ano, no? So, meron pala tayong two days, two to three days, then some some nag, some, some mga weeks, and some even mon months of holding it. Pero, pabago-bago pala, depending on the market situation. Itong pag, ano, uh, portfolio management. Tama, and, bro. You know why? Tama yan, bro. Kasi di naman pwede sabihin na i-dictate mo sa market na, oh, ito, gusto ko hawakan to long term. Pero if you're mm. in a part of the cycle where it's just not working out because it's choppy or because mm. it's on a short-term downtrend, Eddie, no matter how much conviction you have to hold that for a longer period of time, it's not gonna come to fruition, di ba? Kumbaga, I think, you know, successful trading is about finding the right key to the right lock, meaning what setup, what strategy to the right environment. Because we really have to be dynamic. Eh. Di pwede na i-impose anong gusto mo sa mercado. Mm, gets, gets. And also, yung kanina na mention mo is dapat parang positive, something like that. Is there come a time na parang yung yearly ano nyo is naging negative because of market situations? Um, in the instance if ever, and again, this is um speaking on behalf of me, um, I haven't encountered that yet since I just started around a year, a year and a half ago. So, you know, can't speak on behalf of um other teammates, but on average as a team, you know, especially um colleagues like, you know, Javi and Matt, definitely one of the you know top performers in the in the group in the ecosystem we're part of so yeah um i believe average for the clients um they'd be up or definitely having positive alpha more often mm -hmm. than not for the particular period diba? nice grave and yun ay lang ah, baka may, may, you guys mga sa mga nasa general chat pala you can ask questions regarding sa portfolio management and kung paano ba nila ito handle And yun nga pala, Sir Joseph, uh, gusto ko palang i-ask, how sure. do you manage like risk included in such assets kung bakit mo tayo papasukin? How do you manage such risk and yung rewards nito? Good question. So, it's really about... Um controlling your position sizes and having, you know, strict cut levels, right? In our team or, you know, traders are familiar with VAR, your value at risk for a certain percentage of your portfolio. And that's something that we have to, you know, stay on top of, especially when there are huge bouts of volatility in the market where if we have to cut, we have to cut. And when we're going to cut, it'll be cutting small or break even or at a small gain or on worst case a small loss right to make sure that mm -hmm. it's 
least damage to the portfolio. You know, we really do not ever want to be in a situation where a stage one tumor becomes malalaki siya into a stage four cancer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mahirap nga yun kasi it's like, ano yun, no? Kasi dumating yung time na parang ako expecting na tataas pa to until hindi na siya tumaas. So mm-hmm. I think majority of uh, like retail traders here, retail investors is yung iba expecting na tataas pa. So we, we don't know how to cut our losses or how to stop mm-hmm. our losses hanggang talagang bumaba na. Ikaw, Fetal, what do you think about that? Kasi to be honest, if a person does have little background talaga in trading, tapos mas lalong really, very, ano, more on emotions siya nag-based, mm-hmm. doon talaga madalas na stop loss or let's say, um, yung, kasi may, may part ng greed ang tao na parang, hindi, aakat pa yan, hindi lang second, second or third uh, times later, ticks later, biglang dump. Oh, yeah. Hirap na, mahirap. Tapos hindi na bumalik, di ba? Hindi na. na. <laughs> so, mahirap yan. Mahirap so, umasa sa like merkado. <laughs> ang, 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 nangyayasa, ang nangyayari lang, emotional analysis na lang. <laughs> emotional analysis. <laughs> okay, well, ayun, mara- actually, marami nagtatanong before, even before. Like, may, dito sa handling portfolio, syempre, compared sa trading, uh, how do you hand- handle your emotions? Ayun. Kasi na-mention ni Fatal eh. Like, is there some nice, kind of nice. emotions here? Something like that? Um, well, I think it, different, it differs per person. But if you were to ask me how I do it, it's, you know, realizing that I'm here doing it professionally, definitely. But at the same time, this is a means to an end and not an end in itself Alam yun, like in these kinds of instances there will be periods of volatility there are going to be fuck ups there are going to be sad times there are going to be painful moments pero um yeah you just have to you know persevere past that and realize na parang we're here to do this you know for the rest of our life at least i really enjoy this profession it's something that i'm passionate about and it's a means to an end and not an end in itself, meaning we're all here to, you know, improve our financial situation. We're here to help our subscribers, help our clients reach their financial goals. Pero if you're only chasing money, if you're only chasing percentage gain in your PL, it's not so fulfilling. Mm-hmm. Like, Shampra, there has to be a higher level aspiration to that. So that kind of, you know, allows me to sort of not take things too seriously. Not that I don't take it seriously, but you understand the difference. Na parang you can't be too hard on yourself as well. So it's really about a healthy balance para hindi ka mabaliw or hindi ka mabad trip all the time. But another thing I do is, you know, um, helps to take a break as well from the chart, you know. And this is speaking as someone doing this professionally. It also gets hard. I mean... Sometimes people think na, okay, you're doing what you're passionate about. It will be happy all the time. Well, yeah, I enjoy what I'm doing for sure. But there are also times where kailangan mo rin magpahinga, you know, go out. Um, I go out with my girlfriend, Sibel, or I exercise. So I started, you know, training jiu-jitsu again with my teammates nice. in Cobrinha, Manila. So doing other things, I mean, you know... Uh, Anabang tinatawag nila. It's not. It's no longer work-life balance, but work-life integration. And I think, mm. especially you know, trading crypto as well full time. You know, um, it really just has to be embedded dun sa routine mo. And alam mo yon, parang doing it in a sustainable manner. Kasi kung like hataw every day, one hundred one percent beast mode, araw araw. Uh, you're gonna at some point burn out, right? You're, you're at some point gonna hate your job. You're at some point gonna make some shitty decision because you're fatigued, right? So it's about, um, it's like a marathon, not a sprint. It's about consistency versus intensity. It's about doing it in a sustainable manner versus that which is um, 
malakas sa umpisa pero magfa-fade lang siya. Parang breakout lang na fake out, 'di ba? Ayaw natin 'yan. Gusto natin mga breakout with follow through na may volume higher, 'di ba? Hindi yung papasahin ka na fake out tapos babalik lang. Parang what we saw over the past week, 'di ba? <laughs> <laughs> Kaya ka, yun din eh, na-news rin yan eh, no? 39k to 37, 36k. Yan, grabe. Sheesh! <laughs> Pero, crazy. Ayun, uh, crazy, talaga, crazy. And, eto, uh, what's your higher level of aspiration pala since you've mentioned it kanina? In doing this portfolio management to control your emotion and like your means to an end. So, mm-hmm, what's this mm-hmm. end? or your higher level aspiration? Uh, for me, honestly, in as much as I love trading, I love the markets, um, I really look at money as a means to an end and not an end in itself. So using these instruments we have, using the markets, you know, crypto, NFT, stocks, using that to, you know, create our war chest ng pera na I can invest in, you know, other things. Um, possible franchises down the line, businesses, startups, you know, just investing in other stuff outside um, traditional financial assets because well, that's what I want to do with my life. Eh. Um, and I really look at the financial markets as a way to be able to get to that in as much as, you know, I love it. But like, I also, you know, enjoy other stuff, right? <laughs> Yun, grabe. And yun, Fatal, do you have, ano ba? Do you have any other questions? Baka di ka nakapagtanong ha, if ever. Like, to be honest, uh, yung knowledge na ako ngayon kay Sir Singson talagang super impactful sa akin. Kasi sakit na matama eh. Yung mga, alam mo yung mga maling <laughs> trades mo. <laughs> like, uh, you sh- talagang kailangan ko talagang mag-learn in terms of how to handle effectively my or own portfolio pa rin talaga in yes. terms of having um risk analysis then what uh and in terms of balancing then my life and work talaga kasi mm-hmm. in terms of having both at the top at the same time it's very a negative impact overall in the long run kasi mm-hmm. for me para napapansin ko if a person does a 100% work let's say, for one week. Ang drawback niyan, maybe months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for for me, parang na-etch siya sa utak natin or sa ating emotions na parang slowly declining yung interest factor mo sa ginagawa mo daily. Mm. Diminishing marginal utility for mm. what you do. Right? Mm. Exactly. <laughs> Grabe, sobrang relate ako sa'yo, Fatal. Ganda ng insight mo and Ayun, actually, yung parang as a ano rin, no, retail investor, retail trader, parang hindi ko rin na-realize yun yung mga ginagawa li, ni Sir Singson, actually. And also, I wanna ask you pala, Sir Singson. Sure. Like, do you lang. also, ano ba, uh, do you also do, ano to, uh, ito bang portfolio management? Is it more on uh, fundamental analysis or technical analysis? Great question. So, um, for full transparency, our approach, and this is also what we teach for our community in Open Journal, it's really primarily a technical based system with Elliott Wave as a strategic bias and an, a macro economic overlay, meaning looking at inflation, looking at risk on, risk off, looking at funds flow and sentiment. So, pretty much those buckets as opposed to a fundamental or valuation based isma. approach yeah mm, so grabe ilaaral niyo pala talaga yung at uh, yung other markets how the econ- economy works yes how the, exactly. money, how the money flows exactly so <laughs> if you guys are, yeah if if you guys are familiar with you know yields the tnx the us dollar D- dxy U.S. markets, your S&P, Dow Jones, Nasdaq, you know, just trying to stay on top of what we call our, you know, intermarket analysis. And that's where, you know, Javi teaches us a lot. And as the chief investment officer for Open Journal and co-founder, he, you know, stays on top of all those buckets and 
helps our team and helps our community navigate that complexity. Grove. So that's how that's how portfolio management works. So it really is it it, it isn't just I don't know like re- research on the project itself, but research on the whole economy and on the whole na mapalibot sa proyektong ito like yun nga yung mga Dow Jones and such and how the money flows and grabe mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. don't 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 actually yeah kaya it's important that you know as a group as a team we also have our own responsibilities or focus area so if si Habs does what i mentioned you know other co-founder general manager Matt Flores is a pang malupit na malupit na fund manager and trader <laughs> He helps the man stay on top of, you know, local market, what he does best, what he loves doing. And he does that with our new team member, si Bro Ed, um, Ed Bayangos. He's also with us. And yeah, you know, shout out if these guys are watching. They're going to hear this at some point in time. Pero yeah, then ako naman, you know, more open journal, marketing, advertising, PR, outward facing engagement, diba? Mga ganto na... Um, helping the community as well, diba? Grabe, ang galing, galing nun. And ito pala may tanong si Isabel Laurel from YouTube, actually. Hindi ko nabasa to, pero yun. Nice. Um, question, what's a day like for a portfolio manager? Yung environment daw ay bull cycle and or bear cycle. Right, so that's a great question, Bell. You know, appreciate it. And I guess the day in the life is different depending on what's happening within those particular cycles. So I guess in a in a bull cycle there are more opportunities and the challenge naman there is amidst all of these opportunities what's going to be the fastest moving horse? What's going to be the cryptocurrency or the equity with the largest upside? Alam mo yon kasi during those times lahat gumagalaw. So there would be more back testing there would be maybe a deeper drill down on some macro maybe even funda for projects because the challenge in that environment not only is finding the fastest but being able to hold the man pakiat right sempre sabi ni lolo jesse livermore you know money is made not in the buying and the selling but in the sitting and the holding so yun naman po yung challenge in a in a bull market, how do you hold amidst uh, short-term pullbacks to your five-day, ten-day moving average or your two, three, six, three, eight, two fib support? Mga ganyan. Um, to answer the question on the bear side, naman, just like the short-term um, things we're seeing right now, we're in the middle of this volatility. Um, I guess there's also a lot of discipline needed because we're going to be making less moves and we have to sit on our hands because sometimes nakakatemp mag-deploy, nakakatemp mag-plunch, nakakatemp mag-send ng probe position. Pero kung ikakat mo lang or kung yung hit ratio mo is falling at a level where it's taking a damage on your edge or on your PNL, adi chillax muna. Wait until there are more favorable market conditions. So, yeah, um, I guess the day in the life of what we have to do will really be different depending on how the market is playing out. And Tremperman, of course, in the middle of that, you have choppy range-bound environments, which yes. are the hardest to trade. And sometimes Ooh. it's also a good idea not to trade that, diba? Pero kailangan din namin maghanap ng potential opportunity, diba? Focus for mm. it. Actually, mm, actually, that's my question, too. Eh. What, like, What's this? What's your most stressful day? Kung bear market ba or bull market? Right. Um. Good question. Siguro very stressful yung instances in a bull market where you get shaken out or you're unable to ride something that you wanted to ride. Dalo mayon like you're watching this for. A long time, you, you have a trade plan, bigla na lang puputok. Nagbanyo ka lang, or nagkape ka lang, or kumain ka, or 
nakatulog ka ng konti, then bigla na lang, oh wait, there was an explosive move, up na siya 20-30%. Just like what we saw in some instances with Gala, in Sand, in Mana, alam mo yun, sometimes you're not able to ride the whole move, but it's only in hindsight where that could be addressed because there's a reason why you didn't buy it at that point in time, or there's also a reason why you had to sell it at that point in time, and it only becomes an afterthought na, ah, shit, dapat hinawakan ko yan. So, yeah. there's a lot of hindsight with that. Then, on the other side naman, pare, yung challenging with the with the bear market is, like what we saw this week, nung papaasahin ka ng mga short-term breakouts, <laughs> take a look at the chart of FXS, paasa ng chart na yan. All those different parts na mukhang, uy, mukhang may short-term bounce play dito, ah. mukhang aakit na ito, ah. bigla na nang mag-profane ba- super hard. Yeah. <laughs> stressful, very stressful when those um, things happen na you're unable to ride something you've been watching or mm-hmm. you just have to keep cutting probes that aren't working out. Ba? Grabe. How about yung ano, mga stable market? Isn't that more stressful kasi mas less yung potential profit neto or something like that what do you mean stable market like it's I mean, clearly trending parang, hindi siya yung parang pataas baba na sobrang lala mm, parang, like it's a range bound yeah, market parang nag stay lang siya sa 37 to 30 okay something like that that's hard very, also very, very hard also mahirap yun kasi number one kamusta yung risk reward ratios to nyo it becomes an asymmetrical trade opportunity wherein mm-hmm. The downside is as equally likely as the upside and you might be better off not doing anything or waiting until you have a confirmed breakout because if you force yourself to play to play the range baka maraming whips dyan eh. dyan tayo na so mm-hmm. it depends on your strategy on what kind of approach your back testing has proved to be the most um, accurate and profitable Yon, grabe. Sobra solid, sobra solid mo, Sir Singson. And sobrang dami kong natutunan, especially you've answered every of my questions. Kasi sobrang curious ako eh. Kung paano, paano nag-work on how do you perform, as, especially you're a professional when it comes to handling portfolios. Kasi I've experienced that na parang, yun, yung tatay ko, ako nilagang mm-hmm. handle <laughs> ng portfolio niya. Yung, yung tawas right. to the point na pati yung pamilya ko, ako yung lagahandle ng portfolio. So, mm-hmm. yeah, sobrang nakaka-relate talaga. How about you, Fatal? Yeah. Relate much talaga ako and the way yung mga questions was answered kanina, like, ang very, ano, very super, ano talaga. Ang uh, dami ko talaga natutunan and as well as, at pansin mo naman kanina, like, the insights that I get talaga na parang I could give off talagang um, I'd learned a lot from this episode din talaga, promise. Sobra, sobra. Sobrang dami ko natutunan. And syempre, before, before pala, ano, uh, before our last question, um, gusto ko muna tanongin pala, Sir Singson, like, sure. anong mas favorite mo? Stock market or crypto market? <laughs> right. Good question. Um, <laughs> crypto market. For the simple reason that volatility cuts both ways. And, alam yun, like, kung walang volatility, edi walang opportunity. And as much as it's very hard, and as much as it's shitty, and as much as it's stressful, the reason why may volatility is because you have huge amounts of mispricing. Either something is um, underpriced or overpriced, and you can take advantage of the difference. So, yeah. Pero, to be clear, um, that doesn't mean na uh, pwedeng iwanan yung stock market because there's still a lot of opportunity there and it's also something that we professionally focus and do well on as well and manage money, you know, in the millions. And just because it's not as volatile doesn't mean it's not worth trading because definitely there are gems there as well. And opportunities to make a lot of money especially with the way our local market is maturing we're seeing a lot yes. of REITs be listed we've had you know years where and daming mga IPO obviously some better than others right 
no need to name any names, but like, you know, we're a growing economy. We also have new indices as well being uh, created, diba? Right? There are some main news done about some new indices. So it's pretty awesome, you know. Um, people de iwan and yung local market just because um, crypto has more opportunity or more volatility. Um, before sure. the last question, Barry, uh, I'll. Bayaran ko yung utang ko kanina. I had an utang question about what are the good sides <laughs> see, naman see. of it? Ano yung good side ng mm-hmm. portfolio management of this kind of work? I guess the good side is, of course, doing what you're passionate about. So, mas ganado. Because I also experienced in the past a certain corporate track that I thought I wanted when I was in university. But... When I got that track, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't for me. It wasn't aligned in terms of competency and in terms of what I wanted to do, diba? Um It's also nice to be able to control your own time. Um, I miss, guys, to those trading local market. Diba miss natin yung ano, nung nag-close ng 1 p.m.? Pero ngayon, 3 p.m. na, diba? So, it's just <laughs> nice to be able to control your own time, set your own meetings, uh, try to do what you want and can do in as much as, you know, you still follow a certain routine and schedule. Grabe. Sobrang solid pala, eh, no? And, kasi kala ko, um, yun nga, yun na-mention niya rin, Sir Singson, like, yun, kailangan mo rin alamin yung outside markets, ibang, ano, uh, ibang mga galawan ng money flows, like, iba, yung mga iba pang galawan ng ibang tawag din, mga stocks para lang sa mm-hmm. isang stock na to nakasama yan sa uh, fundamental analysis. Yes, kala ko so, so, sobrang stressful ng galol. And yun nga, na-mention mo, it's your passion. So, iba talaga kapag passion mo ang isang bagay na mas mm-hmm. may enjoy mo eh. Every research that you do, tawa ba? <laughs> kasi, yes. kasi sobrang research yan eh. Di ba? Yung portfolio handling, sobrang research ata yung gagawin mo dyan. Yeah, kaya minsan, alam mo yun, and my, my colleagues, my teammates, mentors, and community will also relate na parang if you're doing this full-time professionally, it becomes a part of your life na talaga eh. Not in a sad way or in a stressful way, but yun yung reality, di ba? I mean, um, work-life integration and, you know, doing things in a healthy, sustainable manner kasi at the end of the day, health is wealth pa rin. Dapat, you know, malusog, dapat uh, you know, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, okay pa din tayo. Especially during these times. Mm-hmm. Grabe. Solid, solid. Fatal, ikaw. Gusto mo, ikaw. Gusto mo, ikaw na magtanong lang last question. <laughs> or under ba yung, yung under sa YouTube, right? Tama ba? Yes. Uh, and the, uh, under sa... Uh, yeah, sige, sige. Ito muna, ito Alag, muna. Game lang, guys. Game lang. Keep it coming. Ito All muna. good. Ito muna. So technically, one of our same same ano yan, same na nagtanong tayo sa YouTube, uh, sure, si Belden. Sure. So question now: Given Open Journal has growth for one thousand to over three thousand in under two years, what do the future community members look forward to? Whoa. Wow, that's an awesome question. You know, I'm really um, happy galing, galing. about Open Journal, our team. You know, our Open Journal Light community as well on Investagrams. Um, it's really about um, doing things better because, you know, we're not here to do so many things, right? We're here to do a few things at an elite level. And that, you know, that requires a lot of pressure testing. That requires a lot of adjusting strategy. That requires a lot of trial and error mistakes to be made so we just want to continue doing what we're doing well doing it at a better or excellent level and also adapting to the market right in as much as we have our plans or ideas we still want to be able to adjust with the opportunities that will present itself and how this ever volatile and uncertain landscape is gonna grow alam, alam naman natin you know that how web3 blockchain and all of these stuff are maturing we will adjust accordingly and at the end of the day we just wanna add value to our subscribers and really help them navigate these environments and we're just here to help people 
become an outlier. Not saying that if you join our community, kikita ka, it will be very easy. No, we're here to make things less challenging. We want to shorten the learning curve. We want to increase the probabilistic chance of you making money. And alam naman natin, guys, diba? 80, 90% of traders lose money in the long run. So, yes. ayan, crypto or stock market. And for our team and community, if we can increase that by a margin, then we can say we're contributing to the landscape of financial literacy. Diba? Mm-hmm. Grabe. Ganda, ganda na answer mo, Sir Singson. And talagang ano, tuloy-tuloy lang din talaga, no? And for the people rin, and for the community, ang mahalaga nag-benefit sila. Yes. Diba? And that's why we also appreciate feedback. You know, we're called Open Journal for a reason. We... Mm-hmm. We do our best to be transparent with not just our trades, not just our mistakes and blessings, but we're transparent to also, you know, um, make mistakes and also ask for feedback para we can do our best to give our family and community members, you know, what they want and adjust the business accordingly, adjust the strategies and the offerings we have. So dynamic naman po kami as much as we can. Yon grave solid din. Ano pala um ito how do you join how do we join your or how do we how do people join your community nga pala? Sa mga curious diyan. Awesome question. Um I'll put the link right now in the, you know, BPOS Discord and I'll also put it in a bit sa YouTube so people can be connected with us, you know. Um in this link you can you can access our free group on Investagrams, Open Journal Lite, which has um, grown in the past, you know, just doing our best to add value by also helping the community for free with that regard. And really also just doing our best to add value to those who, you know, want to support us and pay a premium for our, you know, premium services. So I put the link in the Discord chat and right now I'll put the link in the live just so people can be connected with us and see what we have alam mo yun, check out our social media as well we have a, a facebook page and instagram for open journal etc so yeah within that link i think that will answer majority if not all of your questions and yeah kung may tanong kayo about open journal or anything just shoot me a message no problema yun grabe thank you dun. and yun guys if you are curious more about open journal or even kay sir singson just ask him and nandiyan naman yung links towards their community. And if you want to participate in the premium, just let Sir Singson know, actually. <laughs> and yun, last question, actually, Sir Singson. Kasi medyo nag-overtime na pala tayo. Solid. Solid okay na pwede naman. Hindi ko napansin eh. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that was fun. I enjoyed a lot. Yeah, grabe. And ito, ito pala. What are your tips for invest for new investors or traders actually nice what are your tips for them cool um so yeah a few tips you know um i'll try to give as many as i can within a short amount of time number one is be open to being uncomfortable right what, what does that mean uncomfortable diba? like for me for example before i was uncomfortable about learning about DeFi and nfts not saying i'm in any way an expert in those fields but there are always opportunities to learn something new in this ever rapidly developing and changing space. You can't be stagnant. You always have to be willing to be uncomfortable in the sense na yung papasukan mo, hindi mo gamay, hindi mo gets, hindi mo alam. And that's the nature of learning, di ba? Alam man, like if you're, a, if you're in TradFi and yeah, I know how the stock market works, whatever, and you close your mind, you close off opportunity, to anything outside that, edi paano ka matututo? How will you g- generate alpha or potential mm-hmm. opportunities for new things? So I think traders and investors have to be uncomfortable in a sense that they're open to new learning and they're open to new mental models, new businesses, new methodologies, new opportunities for them to capitalize on. That's the first, right? Second yeah. will be to be consistent with what you're doing. Because you mentioned investor and trader. We all know magkaiba naman yan, you know. Traders mm. 
Um, of course, more medium short term, while investors more long term, probably dabble in some sort of um, dollar or peso cost averaging. So, wag po tayo mag style drift. Kasi some people, pag bull market, gusto nila trader. trader. Pag bear market, gusto nila, mm. ah, okay lang, investor Bold. ako, Bold. long term. <laughs> Bag holder. <laughs> Bag holder, diamond hands, LFG, diamond all that hands. stuff. <laughs> Um, don't style drift. Um, if you're mm-hmm. doing one thing, do that. I know some people who, you know, they have short-term bags, they have long-term bags. That's fine, I guess. Just make sure you have the discipline to wear the hat accordingly and do what has to be done accordingly. If a trade is going south and you have to cut it, cut it. If your strategy is really some sort mm-hmm. of long-term dollar cost averaging then do that stick to the strategy and in relation to that also um is risk management so i think number three is really risk management i know that sobrang laos na to and like cutting <laughs> losses and all that stuff but it's just true right i mean i i wrote this on my wall i think and it's something along lines of the pain of cutting but getting shaken out in hindsight is not as bad compared to not cutting and seeing it follow through lower. Diba? Mm-hmm. Diba, the reason naman why we don't want to cut is, is mm. the reason why we don't want to cut, we're scared na, ah, baka mag-reverse. Baka to maas ba? Mm-hmm. But like, if that happens, edi, okay lang. Buy the pullback, diba? Pero if you do not cut, and then it follows through lower. Adi GG, di ba? Parang GG. mas sabog na yung psychology. Mas mahirap na to fix mm-hmm. that situation. Um, maybe other few tips are um, have an accountability partner. So this could be a, a mentor. This could be a friend. This could be a significant other. This could be a community. But have someone you can share your trades with because... Tayong mga humans, we're social beings, eh. And not only are we imperfect social beings, but, I mean, bobo tayo, eh. I mean, don't get me wrong. We do stupid shit all the time. We're emotional creatures. We're irrational mm. beings. And mm-hmm. we need a certain sense of accountability to be able to stay on a course that is profitable and sustainable. So we need to have that kind of um, person or group who can keep us in check, no matter how good you are, no matter if you're a beginner or you're advanced or you've been doing it for one year versus doing it for 10 years, you know, you still need to be accountable someone for someone other than yourself because you need these individuals to help find out your blind spots. Lahat naman tayo may sariling mm-hmm. blind spots, may sariling bias. And it's important to be able to be called out on your mistakes and not fall into some confirmation bias where you just affirm what you're doing wrong because you're not aware of it, diba? Yun lang naman. I think those are some tips for people and both traders and investors. If you have any other questions, let me know before I can give you know my final words or whatever before we adjourn <laughs> tonight. And maka-weekend na tayo, mga fam, kasi big day on Monday para sa election Big day natin. on Monday, talaga. So, grabe. And f- before we think about, before we stress over about Monday, so, gr- ang grabe, solid ng sagot mo, Sir Sings, and, and solid ng tips mo, especially, tumama sa akin yung ano eh, yung stay on what on stay on what you want to focus on like investor ka ba or trader kasi before it actually ano eh, before no nag bull run sabi ko sige invest ako dito for the long term eh wala like excited ako sa iba eh parang grabe mm-hmm. pati ito hindi to mataas tapos yung iba tumataas so umalis ako dun sa project umalis ako sa project pero iba tao sa project na tumataas mm-hmm, tapos mm-hmm. yung project naman na tumataas yun yung hindi tumataas. Yung, yung inalisan ko, yung tumataas talaga. Yup, yup. Exactly. <laughs> Bull market <laughs> problems, diba? <laughs> Bull market problems pa lang. Parang palipat-lipat. Palipat-lipat ka ng asset. So, hindi hindi talaga tumataas yung portfolio mo because iba-iba ng asset. Di, ka, di ako marunong maghintay nun. That time na yun. So, hmm. that's, I think that's what I learned. And yun talaga yung tumama sa akin. 
'di ba? Ikaw ba fatal? <laughs> exactly to be honest, same scenario din sa iyo no. Jackie to be honest talaga. Like Ili term na balimbing <laughs> in terms of sa crypto. Balimbing kasi tawag ka ganto, mas mabalimbing kasi tawag ka ganto. Dahil napansin mo nag-iiba lang yung trend tapos parang soon maki-hype. Mm-hmm. Then ah uh, actually FOMO, FOMO. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Grabe. And also right. yung 'di ba yung accountability, especially that one. Uh, sobrang relate ako diyan Sir Singson accountability for someone other than yourself. Sobrang solid ng advice mo na yun kasi ano eh, parang kapag nag-focus ka lang, ikaw lang nakakaalam sa sarili mo, yung mga ginagawa mo, hindi mo maki- may mga blind spot talaga na yung someone mo lang ang makakita. Yung kunyari, mga partner mo, o kaya your friend, o kaya yung community mo, like, kunyari, di ba? Or ano, kunyari, when it comes to fundamental analysis or an- analyzing a certain project, syempre, mahalaga dyan yung community rin na, or mga friends mo kasi dun mo malalaman eh kung, ano eh, kung maganda ba talaga yung project depende sa opinion ng kasama right. mo. <laughs> And bro, I just wanna add, I think it's an important point, uh, they mean to interrupt, pero crypto is a very tribal place and i'm just calling a spade a spade everyone has their own bias everyone has mm-hmm. their own alam mo yun, their own whatever community whatever <laughs> blockchain whatever project na they really support and love but if prices disagree with you you need someone to tell you yo benta mo na yan kahit promising yung outlook kahit sobrang solid ng roadmap or whatever, you know, when the chart talks, it pays to listen, di ba? Mm, grabe, solid, solid ng insight nyo dun, Sir Singson. And yun, guys, uh, sa, sa mga nasa Gen Chat pala, and even sa mga nanonood sa YouTube or yung ma- manonood pa lang sa YouTube or nanonood ngayon kahit hindi na live, uh, let me know anong, anong gusto nyong sabihin. Let me know kung ano natutunan nyo kay Sir Singson. Especially right now, na, mga nasa general chat, di namin kayo nakalimutan Parinig naman kasi alam ko may mga nagchat-chat din dito. Yan, sila Board Rager and sila Board God King nandiyan kayo and sila Danjo. Nandito rin pala sila Danjo. Welcome here sa ating malupitang kwentuhan sa ating podcast right now. And yun, so nice. Sir Singson, ano pala uh, any ano uh, saan namin pwedeng malaman pa yung kunya may mga tanong community o kaya They're interested with Open Journal, interested so you. Let me know. Sure, of Let course. me know. Let yeah, us know. Um, I'll put the link again in the Discord general chat, in the YouTube comment section, and in the Facebook mamaya. And I just wanted to say, guys, Fatal, Bro Jockey Jello, maraming salamat. Thank you for being such awesome hosts. Thank you for <laughs> entertaining our audience and me and Kimi Company during this little usapan natin, bro talk na real talk. And I'm happy to help so out our community, you know, board punks, help you guys all the time. And it's my pleasure to help out. And yeah, here for you guys. And I hope everyone stays safe. And before I conclude, just want to say thank you, of course, to, you know, Open Journal, our, our core team members, you know, Habs Medina, Matt Flores, and Bayangos, Um, Jiro, myself, and of course, the Open Journal family members who may be watching this now or may be watching this as a recording. Um, I really appreciate it, as well as our, you know, Investa fam, Jan, Sedatoma, Madam Joanne, etc. Everyone helping us in this business and doing it together. And of course, Bell, thank you for your support and help with all these nuances and everything personally and professionally. And you and guys have a good, you know, balance of the evening and a good day tomorrow. Pahinga tayong lahat dahil Monday is important for everything, di ba? Ingat. Yun, grabe. Sige. Uh, yun, grabe. Thank you very much, Sir Singson. So, sabi nga ni Sir Singson is Monday is a very important day. So, yeah. Vote wisely. <laughs> and, ano tawag nyo? Vote. Uh, vote wisely. <laughs>